Hey guys, so we're back with our Pag-ibig MP2 series and as you all know, we are walking, living, sitting in different times. These are times that we have not seen before and if you watch my previous videos, we differentiated this era compared to the 2008 recession, compared to the 1997 Asian financial crisis, that we are sitting and seeing something different. We are seeing history unfold before our very eyes. That being said, of course, it's natural for people to uh, raise questions about their investments as well. And over the past few weeks, especially that we're seeing the height you know, of this fear, anxiety, and panic going on, a lot of people have been asking, since the stock market is down, and a lot of people have been, uh, there's a lot of fear about investments. How does the Pagibig MP2 fare in times like this, in times that there's a lot of panic as well? So uh, just before I begin as well, I'd like to I'd like to share what Pagibig MP2 is since there might be some people who uh, don't know what Pagibig MP2 is. Uh, just a quick note, I'm just going to share it very, very quick. But if you want to get a larger explanation on this, I have over 18 videos. Uh, in my, just go to the playlist section of my YouTube channel and then go to Pagibig. There's over 18 videos there uh, detailing the background of what Pagibig is. But just a general overview, general overview of what Pagibig MP2 is. It's basically a savings fund of Pagibig, which will give you a higher rate of return than Pagibig MP1. Pagibig MP1 is the natural standard. Uh, it's the automatic deduction that you normally get for Pag-ibig members. And I think if I remember correctly, Pag-ibig MP2 should always be 0.5% higher than Pag-ibig MP1. So if people are asking also, uh, is, that means Pag-ibig MP1's rate is also high. Yes, it is. Pag-ibig MP1, uh, MP1's interest rate or, or, the, or the rate of return that you will get from Pag-ibig MP1 still beats a lot of those time deposits as well. It's just that Pag-ibig MP2 is higher. And I guess one of the things that makes Pag-ibig MP2 uh, so different compared to Pag-ibig MP1 Pagibig MP1, it takes you, I think, at least 20 years before you can take out the money. Whereas Pagibig MP2, uh, the goal of this is five years. You can put it and leave it for five years and take it out, or you can reinvest the money so it's compounding. And again, the strength you can you can watch it from all of the videos that I created. But the strength of Pagibig MP2 is basically you put in money, then the interest that you get from that you reinvest it so that it becomes compounding. Uh, your money gets to have compounding interest. It's money making money for you as well. And that's what I suggest uh, to everyone who wants, who loves investing and who wants to just put in money and forget all about it. But all of that, uh, you can just go to, uh, my, you can just you can just check all of that in the playlist section of Pagibig MP2 of the channel as well. So that's basically it. In terms of classification, Pagibig MP2 is basically low risk. Pagibig MP2 is basically uh doesn't give you a lot of volatility. Pagibig MP2 also does not require a lot of analysis compared to investing in the stock market. It does not also require selling compared to uh, when you have real estate, you need to market, you need to sell your unit as well. So those are the underlying uh, things about Pagibig. And I'll say this also before we proceed to the meat of the topic that uh, Pagibig MP2, basically, you just need 500 pesos to start. And that's one of its underlying, I think, advantages compared to real estate, compared to uh, starting your own business. You don't need a large amount of capital. You don't need a lot of time to monitor it. You don't need to uh, have a large amount of exp expertise or tools to be able to understand what it is, but you can get into it no matter where you are in life, no matter what you're doing, and no matter how busy you are as well. So there. But again, as what I've mentioned, we are living in different times. We are sitting in something that's uh, different as well, and that I hope that uh, you understand that no matter that in spite of uh, in spite of whatever anecdotes that I've made upon this about Pagibig MP2, there will always be some underlying uh, shifts in the economy that may cause certain investments to change as well. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, the IMF already uh, stated that the whole world right now, the global economy, is already in a recession. So. Uh, it's, it's way ahead already of the numbers, but when I am F says it already, it already sets set sentiment that's not positive already. And what does that do? 
when people think that there's a recession going on, when people think that everything's negative, it causes people to become more defensive, meaning they're not going to spend, they're not going to do as much things. It causes people to act uh, based on not not for them being aggressive in their businesses and their expansion plans and their purchases, but it causes them to want to store more cash as well. Storing more cash is, is good on a personal level, but when people store cash and they don't spend it, the economy doesn't thrive. If you watch my previous video, I said that videos, I said that uh, the economy is made up of transactions. One man's spending is another man's earning. When more people spend, more people earn. And when more people earn, more people spend. And then the economy will just continue as a cycle. But when lesser people spend, that means the economy is weaker. And this this denotes also, and this uh, somehow shrouds already how people will react, how people will uh, move just because of this. And uh, based on all of that, also, please do know that... We're, uh, the Philippines is also will also be greatly affected. This is so this is so different from the two thousand eight crash where uh, the, it was just a financial crash and the biggest hit were economies uh, in the U S. and it spilled off to Europe. But now this is something that's so different that uh, exports imports are hit, retail is hit, transports are hit, services are hit, everyone is hit, and people have money. However, even if they have money, they can't spend it because they can't go out, they can't watch a movie, they can't watch a concert, they can't go to a conference, they can't eat out. And in effect, it hits the global economy as a whole. That being said also, uh, we've already seen the stock markets get massively battered down. We've seen the PSEI drop intraday no, to as low as 4,000. Uh, as per the index, we've seen Ayala Land hit 19, we've seen Jollibee hit 90, we've seen SM. SM, SM Prime, AC, BDO, BPI, Metro Bank, GP Capital, JG Summit, Universal Rubina Corporation, Pure Gold get massively hit, get massively uh, beaten down as well. Since they're massively beaten down, since they're massively hit, uh, the goal and the narrative for all of them, for, for all of these companies is basically uh, when they've been hit, there was a large movement downward for the stocks because please remember also that uh, when a lot of people want to be liquid they can sell down their stocks that goes for mutual funds and direct stock investing when they sell large sell downs happen the markets normally drop as well that being said there's been a rising question on whether uh, what's going to happen to mp2 in times like this in times where everything is not so secure when everything when everyone's so scared as well so i want to talk about the risks first number one as you all know all retail establishments are closed, income is down from that. And also, people who are working from that don't have income, won't have income. And as you all know, the travel industry, I've mentioned this in a lot of videos, uh, is virtually zero. There's less people flying, meaning airline companies are not making money, hotels are not making money, restaurants are not making money, flight attendants are not making money as well. Same thing to all of this that are connected to the events industry. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, I'm sure you know this because you're watching, everyone's watching the news right now that uh, they just announced it two days ago that the lockdown in Luzon, or I think already in the whole Philippines, is extended up until April 30. What does that mean as well? Uh, it's not all systems go, no manufacturing, except for essential items, except for essential goods. So that also means that, hey, since there's no, since it's not, systems are not back to normal the economy is not running <laughs> close to where it needs to be if it's not running close to where it needs to be then you can you can be rest assured that there will be some hits in the economy as well i'm going to make more videos about how the gdp will be but people are already expecting number one uh, the gdp might contract meaning instead of the economy growing we're gonna shrink we're gonna get smaller instead of having a larger output we're gonna have a smaller output and if you if you watch my previous video with alvin ang doctor of economics he mentioned that uh he was looking at if all of this happens it would have been a four percent gdp growth for the year that was in the second week of march but guess what we are in april right now and and the targets right now are either two percent to zero or to, to even lower and the longer the lockdown is there's a large economic impact uh, there the larger the economic impact will be but i don't know it's quite it's quite tricky because if you if you open the lockdown earlier and a lot of people are not tested yet and you don't see uh you don't have a vaccine yet i think there's a lot of people who are carriers of the disease of the illness that we don't know 
uh, how big the extent is yet. I think one of the reasons why uh, the cases in the Philippines are very, very low because we have not tested a lot of people yet. We have not, uh, we have, I, I, I really believe that there are a lot of people also in the slums that don't go to hospitals that are hit massively in all of this. So one of the reasons why I'm saying, uh, one of the reasons why I'm saying this is if we open the lockdown too early, what if it spreads and then we lock down again? A second lockdown may be deadlier to all of us than just having one and then we get everything in one go. But that being said, since everything is closed down, uh, number one is this. Uh, because people's income are lower, because people are not making money, businesses are lower, some people who are employed have uncertainty also in terms of their income or some have income but are a bit scared. This is what I believe. Uh, people might defer buying houses. And as you all know, Pag-ibig MP2 is predicated on houses. Pag-ibig MP2 is predicated on people buying houses, taking out the loans. And since there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of panic, people might have lost jobs or people have jobs but they don't have savings and they want to stay liquid. One of the things that they could possibly do is not buy a house. If they don't buy a house, then guess what? There will be no pag-ibig loan. If there's no pag-ibig loan, the income that pag-ibig will get is lower. If you watch the previous videos, I mentioned that uh, the dividends from pag-ibig, uh, the earnings that you get from pag-ibig is not an interest. It's not debt. It's dividends. It's based on uh, the income that pag-ibig generates from its loans, meaning lesser people buy houses, there will be lesser loans, lesser loans, the rate of return that you will get from Pag-ibig will also be smaller. So that's one of the things that you need to consider as of this point in time. I'm saying this also so you can manage your expectations that, hey, loans 2020 might not be as good as what it was in 20, as compared to 2019, 2018, 2017 when the economy was doing so well. Please remember, people will opt to rent, people will opt to sleep with relative fa relatives or family when they need to belt tight and they're not going to buy a house when there's a lot of uncertainty. They're not going to buy a house when their business is not doing well, their job's not doing well, their income is not doing well, uh, and more if they even lost their job as well. Number two is this. Uh, there might be people who lost their jobs, their business might, might not be doing so well, their income might be capped, or talagang something really bad happened to their finances that... Uh, they may not be able to pay their loans. If they default on their loans, that means Pag-ibig will have lesser income also in the same in the same way. And having higher defaults, it, that means that Pag-ibig will, will have to sit on a lot of dead assets without getting any cash in return. And the thing about that is this, when the economy is bad, of course, there will be some people who have the money who will be able to purchase uh, this loans at a cheaper rate and buy those houses at a cheaper at a cheaper price. However, uh, at times like this, a lot of people will be scared. At times like this, a lot of people would want to be liquid. At times like this, a lot of people would want to have cash, would want to protect themselves. And the last thing that they would do is buy a house or purchase a house as well. So why am I saying this? Reason number one and reason number two all points to the fact that it may lessen Pag-ibig's income. If Pag-ibig's income gets lessened, that also means that the dividends that Pag-ibig will give will be possibly lesser. So uh, so what could happen? That's what I mentioned already. Uh, the dividends might be lower. So uh, I, I, what I could know though is possibly this. It depends on what you're pegging it on. Of course, it's Pag-ibig will still be better than, than some savings accounts. Pag-ibig will be better than some traditional fixed income assets. But if you're expecting it to be like what it was before, 8%, 7%. I don't know if that's possible. Uh, but what I'm saying to you guys is if dividends, if earnings of Pagibig will not be so good because of everything that's happening here, you can expect your dividends to be lower as well. That being said, the golden question, should you be scared? Uh, I've mentioned this in the previous videos that one of the underlying advantages of going the route of Pagibig MP2 is basically this. Your capital is guaranteed. So meaning you placed 100,000 pesos, you placed 50,000 pesos, you placed 200,000 pesos, you placed a million pesos. Whatever you put in, it will never go lower. Unlike when you put it in the stock market, you buy the stock at the wrong time, the stock goes down in price. Then the value of your asset, if you would have sold it, would have been massively lower also. 
unlike in pag-ibig, if you put 100,000, you can expect by the time you get it or by the time you need it also, it will also be 100,000. It, it won't be lower than that. It, the growth might not be higher, the cash flow might not be higher, the interest might not be higher, but your capital will never go lower. That's why I said that this is art for people who are a bit conservative because the government will guarantee the capital, the government will guarantee the money that you have placed as well. So that's one thing that you can, uh, based on this video, uh, it would be scary though if the government would go back and say that we won't be able to pay for this and we would have to default. But when the government defaults, uh, we have bigger problems to worry about already. It means it's really, 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 really bad, similar to what, what happened in uh, in Europe, similar to what happened to Greece, that they didn't have any more money to finance their debts as well. So, uh, one thing that that I can, what one thing that I can say as as of this point in time is the risk is your earnings will be lower, but your capital is guaranteed as well. So, during a recession, during bad times, what could give you somehow no security blankets that your money via pagibig. Uh, won't go lower, but the growth, the income that you will have from it may not be as attractive as well. So there, I hope you guys got a lot from it. And uh, I forgot to introduce myself again. My name is Marvin Germo. I create daily videos on investing on the stock market. And if you're new to this channel, I super appreciate it if you could subscribe so that every time I create new videos and you hit the bell, you get updated and you get, you get to be part of this large number of Filipinos learning and pushing to, to be financially free as well. We're very, very close already, guys, to 100,000 subscribers. That's It's amazing. Uh, it's been it's been something that's, uh, I don't know, shocking to me that we're seeing more and more Filipinos be e excited about investing, about business. And that's why I'll never stop uh, creating videos no matter how tired I am, no matter how. It's, it's also not easy to create videos, but... I'm just going to keep on doing it. I'm just going to keep on slugging it because I love what I do. And as I love what I do, I just love to create as much value for you guys as possible. That's why no matter what it is from stocks to business to featuring people with amazing life stories to MP2, I'm just going to make it and do it over and over and over. So comment below, guys, if you stayed up until this portion of the video. Super appreciated to know if this video added value to you as well. And for those who want to attend, no, I have online courses with Jinkitan. The links are in the description. It's called Stock Market for Everyone. Then we also have another online course called Make Money, Grow Money. It's the basics of investing in the stock market and the basics of starting your own business. It's a collaboration with Sean Sinaman. The link is in the description below. Then I also have five books. There's two links in the description below. One, you can order via Shopee. The second one, you can order via uh, the normal route and it will be it could be couriered to you wherever you are not just in the philippines but in the world as well but there super appreciated for every one of you uh, who joined this video and who wanted to learn more about mp2 uh, you can watch my other videos as well uh, in terms of investing in terms of the stock market you can watch this and this uh, right here right now right after this and i really do hope that after all of this is said and done after this lockdown that you guys would learn a lot that you guys would be amazingly well in terms of your finances because that's all i want i just want you guys to uh take your investments to the next level so that's it for now this is marvin germo i hope this video helps you trade well trade strong trade smart see you all again soon guys and god bless you all